I wanted to go ahead and go through the uh, the test we just took, the quiz, um, for both the answers as well as just kind of explaining through how we did it. So I broke it down into three sections here, and we'll start off with the top section, which was just balancing. So for each of these, you got one point for correctly balancing and one point for identifying the reaction type. So we'll start with the reaction types, which most people did really well on. So if you look here at problem number one, uh, we see the hydrogen here, which would be an element, the nitrogen dioxide, which would be a compound, and on the other side of the arrow, we have water, which is a compound, and nitrogen, which is an element. So we see that element compound, element compound pattern, and that is a single replacement reaction. For the second problem, we have a single compound over here on the left side of the arrow as a reactant. One thing. The only thing that can be is a decomposition. Uh, some people got that switched up with a synthesis, because it was just the one thing, but a synthesis would have one product, not one reactant. Uh, question three, we have a copper sulfate and iron nitrate, making a copper nitrate and an iron sulfate. So compound and a compound, making a compound and a compound. That is a double replacement. Here we have this carbon hydrogen oxygen thing, plus oxygen, those are my two uh, reactants, and my product here is carbon dioxide and water. You should recognize this as an organic compound, carbon and hydrogen, reacting with oxygen. An organic compound reacting with oxygen to make carbon dioxide and water is automatically a combustion reaction. And finally, we have a nickel sulfate and a lithium phosphate, making a nickel phosphate and a lithium sulfate. Uh, this is another compound compound, making a compound compound or a double replacement. I did not give you a synthesis on this top portion. Do not assume that since we have gone over five types of reactions and there are five problems, that there is one of each. I am not always so basic. So uh, this first problem, let's go ahead and balance it. So as I'm scanning across, the first thing I kind of notice here uh, that's different is nitrogens here are not balanced and oxygens here are not balanced. And I kind of have to decide what to do first. Um, since the nitrogen is going to affect the oxygen here as well, let me go ahead and balance that one. So I have two nitrogens on the product side, and I need to put a two right here to give me two nitrogens there. That did affect my oxygens. I now have two times two for four oxygens on the reactant side, and I only have a single oxygen here in water. That two in the water only is the hydrogen. So I have a single oxygen on the product, four on the reactant, so I need a four in front of this water. Uh, that does give me four times two for eight hydrogens on the product side. I need to come back over here and I need that to be eight. Well, I already have two. What do I multiply by two to get eight? of four as well. So this one was correctly balanced four, two, four, and you could have left this blank or put a number one. Either would have been fine. So for the second one, I only have two elements here. So I have two silver on the reactant side and one on the product. And I have one oxygen on the reactant side and two on the product. Here, I'm going to go ahead and start with the oxygen and not the silver, because if I balance this first, then that's going to affect both of my elements. So I see this two next to the oxygen. I only have one here, so I do need a two in front of that silver that now gives me two oxygens here but two times two for four silvers so I need to put a four right there and this can remain a one so that's how that one is correctly balanced. Here there are polyatomic ions galore and for some people who got stuck I came up and did this on your papers and drew parentheses around the sulfate so that they all looked the same and then you would see that I have three nitrates, two nitrates, three sulfates and the metals are much clearer to see. So I look at this compound and I see that both of these things have subscripts and I'm gonna say that means I'm gonna have to balance those. So I've got two Fe's here and only one here so I start by putting a two right there 
I've got three of this sulfate thing, and there's my sulfate thing. I only had one of them, so I'm going to put a three right there. Then over here, that gives me two times three nitrates, which is six. I already had two. What do I knew, uh, need to do to get six there? I have to put a three. And then that magically gives me three coppers, three coppers, three sulfates, three sulfates, two irons, two irons, two times three for nitrate, three times two for nitrate. And that last spot can remain a one. So for my next one, combustion, those are some of those funky ones to balance. And I typically always say start with carbon, then hydrogen and oxygen last. Here I notice that oxygen is everywhere and that this is a single odd oxygen. So when that happens, almost always your first step is going to be to put a two right there because otherwise you're going to have to do it at the end. And again, I did that because I have a single oxygen right here. So once I do that, that gives me two times two for four carbons on the reactant side. Carbon dioxide only has one, so I will first put a four right there. For my hydrogens, I now have two times four for eight hydrogens on my reactant side. I have two in the water. I need to get that to eight, so I'm going to put a four. Four times two gives me eight. Now I have to deal with the oxygens. So right here, four times two, that gives me eight oxygens right there plus another four, so I've got a total of 12 oxygens on the product side. So I have to get 12 on the reactant side. So the easy thing to do would put a six here, but that would be wrong because I have two right here. So it's more like two plus what number gives me 12? Well, two plus 10 would give me 12, and this has to end up being 10. So this number is a five, All right, two, five, Four, four. All right, so for the last one here, I've got another series of just kind of stuff everywhere. And I do notice that I've got a two and a three. That two, three combo is always going to end up being a two and a three every single time. That gives me two phosphates, but I had two phosphates. Three sulfates. I don't have three sulfates, so I need a three over there. Three nickels three nickels, three sulfates, three sulfates. So that all balances over. Next section. The next section, I gave you the full word reaction and you had to write it out and then determine the reactant type. So underlining everything, I've got aluminum and oxygen, that's a plus sign, combined to produce white aluminum oxide. Okay. Metal means solid, gas, that's a G, this tells me that's a solid. So we'll start off over here, aluminum, metal, by itself. That's just AL. I don't need anything else. I don't need any numbers. It's a metal by itself, All right? Plus oxygen gas. Now oxygen is one of my seven set of elements that does need to be an O2. And again, those were the seven starting at seven. You marked them on your periodic table. Nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, and then hydrogen over there. All right, combined to produce, arrow, white solid aluminum oxide. So this is a compound, metal and a non-metal, so I need charges. My periodic table, aluminum is a three plus. Oxygen is a two minus. I switch those. So my formula is Al. 2 from the oxygen, O3 from the aluminum, and that is a solid. Now, to balance this guy, 3 oxygens, 2 oxygens. The 2-3 combo requires a 2 right there, a 3 right there, 2 times 2 puts a 4 right there. Now, what kind of reaction is this? Well, I have two elements forming one product. One product, this is a synthesis. All right, next, solutions, as an AQ, potassium hydroxide and aluminum oxide react together to produce solid aluminum hydroxide and a solution 
of potassium oxide. So I'm already noticing I have underlined all compounds. So I can already tell that this is a double replacement, even though I haven't written it yet. But since I have all of these compounds, I need charges. So potassium, group 1, it's a positive. Hydroxide, that's a polyatomic ion, it's a minus. Aluminum oxide, hey, I just did that up here. It's amazing how many of you had different formulas for these same compounds. So aluminum plus 3, oxygen minus 2, and all of these charges, well, they're still the same. So aluminum is a plus 3, hydroxide is a minus, potassium is a plus, and oxide is a 2 minus. So all of those formulas together, potassium hydroxide, KOH. Their charges canceled each other out, so I didn't need anything. All right, aluminum oxide, Al2 from oxygen, O3 from aluminum, and that was also an AQ. Aero, solid aluminum hydroxide. So Al, hydroxide in parentheses, and the 3 goes out here. So aluminum doesn't need a number because hydroxide was a 1. That's a solid, plus potassium oxide. So K takes oxygen's 2, and O takes potassium's 1, which I don't need to write. And then to balance this thing, well, I've got two aluminums right here, so I actually need a two there to begin with. Uh, and then that gives me two times three for six OHs. So I'm going to have to come over here and put a six right there. Six Ks, so that needs to be a three for three times two, six Ks. That gives me three Os, and I had three Os. So that one is all balanced, six, one, two, and three. Now for the last ones, you had to do a little bit more work here. Aluminum metal placed into a blue solution of copper 2 chloride. The solution loses its blue color and brownish metal appears. So aluminum metal, well, that's just like before. Al as a solid plus a solution of copper 2 chloride. That 2 means that's the charge of copper. Chloride is the element chlorine. That's a minus. So that correct formula is Cu. Cl2. It's not Cu2Cl. All right, so that's all I gave you. Well, that's an element and a compound, so that's a single replacement. So what's replacing what? Well, aluminum is a metal, so it's going to switch places with the other metal, which is copper. So my new brownish metal, well, that's copper, and that's a solid. I write it by itself. And then I have my other thing, aluminum with chlorine. Well, aluminum and chlorine. Chlorine has a minus one charge, so no number next to aluminum. And I've been using aluminum over and over and over again, so you should recognize it has a three plus charge. So that's a three down there. And now to balance this, I've got a three two combo for the chlorine. So a two and a three. That requires a three and a two. Okay, next, pure metal can be obtained by heating titanium 4 oxide. That's a 4, people, not a 5 or a 6, with carbon. Okay, so titanium 4, so that means that's a 4 plus, plus, and that's a 2 minus. So when I cross those, I get a Ti2O4, except I'm not writing that, because that reduces down to TiO2 uh, plus carbon. So same thing, compound element, this is a single replacement. Now I say you can get a pure metal. Well, the only metal here is titanium, so that must be one of my products. And the other thing is a gas. Well, carbon and oxygen, how are those going to combine? The only way we've written carbon and oxygen together is carbon dioxide. So there you go. Now, I didn't necessarily give you any information about states of matter, so I wasn't checking for those here. And then on this last one, pure aluminum chloride, high temperature, dangerous because of the poisonous gas released. I gave you one thing, AlCl3. I already wrote it up here. It's solid, heated, dangerous gas. Well, the only way this is going to work is if I split this in half and I make aluminum metal and chlorine as a gas is Cl2. 
balance it, 3, 2, 2, decomposition.